Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Happy Thursday, coming at you with 2022 Topps Series 1 Baseball, six box jumbo, um, three random teams each, and this is break number six. One spot gets you three, all card ship. Big thanks to this group here. Let's copy these names, let's triple you up. There's one already, there's two, and there's three. So you see Mark's uh, last spot mojo star three times. All 30 baseball teams are in. And let's roll it and randomize names and teams eight times, three and a five. One, two, three. And eighth and final time. After eight, we got Mark all the way down to Rick. Three and a five, eight times for the teams. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eighth and final time. After eight, we got the Padres all the way down to the Blue Jays. So good luck, everybody. Here's how the list shakes out. Mark, you got the Padres, Matthew, Rockies, Marlins, and Rays. Michael with the Guardians and Tigers, Mark with the Royals, Danny with the Nationals, Justin with the White Sox, Kevin with the Yankees, David with the Phillies, Matthew with the Cardinals, David with the Orioles, Mark with the Giants and Cubs, Matthew, Pirates, Michael, Braves, Justin with the A's, Mark with the Mariners, Kevin with the Reds, Justin with the Twins, Matthew with the Astros, Rick with the Rangers, Danny with the Diamondbacks, Kevin with the Red Sox, Mark with the Mets, David with the Angels, and uh, Rick with my Dodgers, Danny with the Brew Crew, and Rick with the Bluebirds. All right, so there you go. We're gonna pause the video. When we come back, we're gonna see if there's any trades, and then we'll have the break. Stick around, BRB. All right, welcome back, everybody. There was a little bit of trade chatter but in the end, no deals were done. That's okay. Here on Thursday, the 17th. Thanks, everybody, for joining us, for making us part of your Thursday, my Friday, your Thursday, whatever the day is for you. Thank you. Settle in, ladies and gentlemen. This is definitely a long break. It's about an hour or so. Where did the box topper go? Underneath me? Oh, it's underneath. All right, silver packs up there. Then we got Taylor Trammell, Future Stars, Jumbo card right there. We'll set that aside. And rip open these packs. Got a little basketball on TNT on in the background. Got a, I think this is the last set of games before the All-Star break, right? I think All-Star all -star stuff happening. We have a handful of games today. Miami leading Charlotte 27-17. Love Washington, Brooklyn tonight. Dallas at New Orleans. Philadelphia at Milwaukee. That's the TNT game. And then Houston at Clippers.
thing. The, the game's on Sunday, so when's all the other stuff? I'll If you go to the the break schedule, click that link and that's pinned in the chat. It'll lead you to, to uh, among other things, Joe's picks. I've got some golf picks for the Genesis Invitational. Saturday is all the skill stuff. So, skills challenge, three-point contest, slam dunk. I did make... I did make some money last year for that, thanks to, uh, I made plays for all three three events, and De DeMontis Sabonis won the skills competition, so that was nice. So let's see how I, let's see how I do this here. It's Joey Votto for the Reds, Reds Relic, going to Kevin. These golds are nice, they're not numbered though, all card ship, of course. Now there's a lot of um, these multiplayer cards, right? If they're numbered, we'll randomize it. But if they're not, there's, I mean, there's so many of these cards in there that we're gonna balance it out. The, our, our shipping team will use their discretion to kind of kind of evenly distribute those cards to, uh, to those respective teams. We got a Charlie Blackman, Denver Pride, going to Colorado. That'll be for Matthew. The city flag patch cards are pretty cool. It's a nice addition this year. And now for for Matthew G and the Tampa Bay Rays. You may or may not know that there usually is a pattern to finding the base rookie cards for Wander Franco. So there, there are those triple player cards. Those will be evenly distributed between those teams. But if we see a Corbin Burns, there should be a, of the Brewers, but there should be a Wander right after that. Generally speaking, sometimes it's not, it's not always, but most of the times. And on average, we've generally been seeing, we've generally been seeing a, a Wander Franco rookie card, about, about one per box on average. which I think, I know that these base cards are a little more common, but I think the Wander Franco still go for 20, 30 bucks a pop. That's right, Burns and then Yelich. Usually that's the way, that's the way we've seen it majority of the time. And 34 out of 50, Jacob Stallings. Nice, I don't think I've seen this, uh, that color parallel yet. Thirty-four out of fifty pirates. That'll be for Matthew G. Matt Jen. William saying Monday was your birthday. It was not fifteenth birthday. It was not good. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. We'll get him next year. Sixteen's more of a milestone birthday, so we'll make that. We'll make that one a good one. Jesse, have a good one, man. And our autograph is for the Reds. TJ Friedel. Rookie auto for Kevin. And the Cincinnati Red Legs. Nice one, Kev. I don't know too much about this player, but hopefully he'll end up being great. 
Let's take a DeGrom die cut. Love the uh, that wood border 1987 design. Yankees card here. That's for Kevin and the Bronx Bombers. 113 out of 299. Yankees. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, William. And there's Corbin Burns. There's Wander Franco. There you go, Matt Chen. And again, I think those are still going for about 20, 30 bucks a pop, give or take. Now, of course, we're definitely looking for, if we can find a Wander Franco short print, numbered card, something like that, that would be pretty awesome. And we're only, only just about one box in, so a lot of time, a lot of time. All right, Silver Packs. So these are just the standard parallels here, but they do look pretty cool. Sometimes uh, you'll find parallels that are numbered. Sometimes they can even be autographed is a nice treat. All right, box topper, the jumbo, oversized card, Christian Pache. So the pack will set foot right there. And second box. Speaking of baseball, let's see what we got. According to MLBTradeRumors.com, we did have a meeting between the players and the owners. Today's collective bargaining agreement, or collective bargaining uh, meeting between representatives from the league and the MLB Players Association lasted only 15 minutes. Uh, though Deputy Commissioner Dan Hollum and Negotiator Bruce Meyer continued to speak in a side meeting for about 20 minutes afterwards. The session appeared to center around two new proposals put forward by the union as per several reporters. MLBPA has been looking to move the qualifying threshold for arbitration eligibility to two plus years of service rather than the current three. But now the union has dropped that demand and replaced it with a large increase in the number of players who would be eligible for Super 2 status. All right, so a lot of different negotiating here. Hopefully they get, they get it done. The article goes on, but... All right. Willie, my day is going great. Chad, yeah, we really do need this lockout to end. Tim, how do I fix my shipping address? It says First Street, but it's First Street. Um, First of all, I think you can change it when you log into your account. You should be able to change it. And in the meantime, I would go to jazbeescasebreaks.com, click the support button, 
and definitely let us know about the address change so whatever you have possibly going out will be uh, they'll catch that and change the address Another Wander Franco from Matt. Chad saying, wife and I booked some away Mariners game in the Midwest. Hopefully I don't have to reschedule. I, I, hope, I hope you don't have to reschedule either. Hopefully they'll figure it out. I think I think the, the sort of, there's Julio Urias for the Dodgers, Rick. I think the, the next two weeks are very crucial. If they can kind of figure it out in the next two weeks before the end of the month, basically, it's two wanders in that box. They can get it done then. We're not going to miss. We may miss some spring training time. That might be shortened up, but we should not lose. Uh, should not use lose regular season games. All right, sounds good, Tim. Yeah, um, make sure you contact us through through support and not just an email because I think. I think those are two different accounts. With with support, you'll get a you'll get a more uh, accurate service. That I don't. That's an interesting question. How many games they cancel before they redo the schedule? I don't know. But there must be like, there must be like a trigger where it says if we're losing thirty games or something like that, or X percent of games, then we got to rebalance out, the, redo the schedule. But I don't think anybody. I mean, hopefully, you know, nobody wants to do that, right? Owners don't want to lose money. Players don't want to lose money. Eighty-four out of two ninety-nine. Bryce Harper, Phillies, David. So hopefully they'll get it done. It seems like with some of the concessions. You know, the MLBPA made today. It looks like it looks like people are negotiating. No one's really. They don't seem to be digging their heels in too much. I mean, they are, but. But not like you know, we're just not talking. You know. I was reading that if they miss the first week, they just throw that week. They all oh, they just tack it on at the end of the year. But after a week, they'll redo the entire schedule. Okay, so maybe it's a lot fewer games than I than I initially thought. Well, hopefully, it won't come to that. I think the tricky thing is, I mean, let let's say let's say a deal gets done in the next week or two. I think I read somewhere that they said that from the week they they officially have the collective bargaining agreement done, that it'll be a week, it'll be seven days before they start spring training. So that week is going to be wild because there's a ton of, you know, there's just a lot of loose ends that, that baseball teams have to take care of, you know. Administratively, you know, they got to get free agent signings done, trades could possibly happen. And there's a Riley Adams, nice. So that week is gonna be really busy and then there'll be a shortened spring training which may affect starting pitchers. 1484 out of 2022. Um, Cause they may not have the time to, to, to ramp up their pitch count and get their arms stretched out. So that might be a problem for starting pitchers. Maybe there'll be a, a bigger run on the starting pitching market once the collective bargaining agreement is signed and officially done. Right, I wonder what Matt, yeah, Matt's like, they gotta know if they miss time, they're gonna lose fans, absolutely. And baseball has actually kind of been a little resurgent Oh, nice Joey Gallo, Baseball Stars autograph for Kevin. Yeah, it's Kevin of the Yankees. Three, uh, 83 out of 99. But yeah, no one wants to lose fans. Baseball's actually been having a bit of a resurgent 
resurgence, I guess, in popularity in recent years. I feel like it's been slowly growing. But yeah, they'd, they'd lose all that momentum they've built up if we start to miss games. And we got a Joey Votto, 2021's greatest hits. I think this is just a different parallel, maybe? I wonder how many games will it take before before fans really start losing interest. I, I I think if the season starts somewhere anytime in April, I feel like fans will be a you know I think that they can be okay with that. I feel like if the start of the season starts to get into like May You know, I don't think anyone's gonna be happy about that. Greg Maddox die cut, his old teammate Trevor Jones. Sometimes these can be numbered too. They'll be flipped around when they're numbered. All right, another box down. A couple silver packs. Topper is Andrew Vaughn. I wonder if any of those box toppers can be numbered or autographed. I've not seen either. happening in, in, in Major League Baseball. I guess in, interesting note was that Juan Soto turned down a $350 million extension, 13 and 350, whatever the average annual value of that is, but he apparently he turned it down. And I think his agent Scott Boris, of course, and I think they're gonna, looks like they're gonna ride out the next, the last two years of his deal and then go into free agency. Which will be pretty interesting to see what happens. I mean, if Juan Soto is just just has an average Juan Soto season, which is an amazing season for most players, if he just has an average Juan so a Juan Soto average season, I mean, he'll he'll make he'll make a lot of money. Now, if he knocks out like if he knocks out like, like an MVP in the next two years, which is definitely possible. I mean, how much is he making a year? And baseball contracts, all contracts really in sports just tend to tend to increase year by year, year over year. So it could be a big deal. Four hundred million dollar man. It's possible. Frank Thomas, relic for the White Sox, Justin. 
Give it the big hurt. Trust me, she'll like it too. Got a nice Kyle Lewis, 45 out of 71. These black border cards look really sharp. Seattle, Mark Miller with the Mariners. MM with the M's. Corbin Burns means Wander Franco usually. Matt Jen racking these up. So, as you probably guess, there's gonna be a decent amount of these Juan or Franco base cards out in the market. Good, probably a good idea to to try to grade some. Because those PSA tens will definitely separate themselves from the rest of the Wander Franco base rookie market. These are really sharp too. Wilson Contreras with the big MLB logo medallion. Some of these can be numbered as well, but this one's not. Uh, that's for the Cubbies. That's going to go to Mark and the Cubs. Clemente die cut. We got a Will Smith, 1188 out of 2022, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. And yes, he does use that as a, uh, as a walk up song. Rick with the Dodgers. I think he'll continue to do so. It makes sense. Clayton Kershaw, die cut. The autograph is for the Phillies, Hans Kraus. Rookie autograph for David and the Fighting Phils. That's a short print. So you can see 6-0 on the back right there. And it's flipped around. Thanks to Tops for doing that for us. So nice short print going to the Brew Crew. Danny with the Brewers. Hey, no worries, Rick. Thanks for getting in.
last little bit here. Nice, another nice box in the books. See what we have in the silver packs here. That's numbered, nice. That's uh, Tyler McGill. Mark with the Mets. And that is 102 out of 150. The number's right there. Blue border looks pretty cool, too. All right, we're halfway through this full case jumbo break. Got about another... 30, 35 minutes to go. It's about 10 minutes a box-ish. Silver packs. A nice Ryan Mountcastle box topper for the Orioles. Be for David. MLBTradeRumors.com. That's what this this break's brought to you by MLBTradeRumors.com. Um, Blue Jays quote very interested in Tyler Maley prior to the lockout. I wonder what the uh, what are the big free agents that are remaining out there. I feel like it's been. See if MLBTradeRumors.com has a free agent tracker, maybe? Let's see. I think kind of, there's a whole huge list here, I think. I'm trying to see what the bigger names are. Chris Archer is a free agent. Could be an interesting kind of depth pitcher sort of guy. All right, Javier Baez signed six years, 140, with the uh, with the Tigers. Oh, Archie Bradley, free agent. Chris Bryant, that's a big name out there. Chris Bryant's a free agent. Keep going through the, that list in the next box or two, next over the next couple boxes. Let me just do this. There he is, Chris Bryan. Where's Chris Bryan end up? There's Nick Solak, 1252 out of 2022. Rangers, Rick with the Rangers. Go back to the uh, could go back to the Giants, Chris Bryant. I feel like I feel like the Yankees kind of want to rebuild, kind of reconstruct their their infield, right? So you might be Chris Bryant might be a part of that. 
Jose, what's up, J-Dog? Do you think the Dodgers make any big signings? I don't think so. There's Kettle Marte. I mean, I think they'll re-sign... I think they'll re-sign Clayton Kershaw. It's a nice Kettle Marte for the Mariners. That'll be... Or, I'm sorry, Diamondbacks. He used to be a Mariner. Diamondbacks. Danny. Phoenix Pride. Babe Ruth die cut. Nice. Goes to the Yankees. Apparently, there's a really short printed Mickey Mantle that could be a fun, fun chase, fun search for Kevin and the Yankees. I think the Dodgers, Dodgers probably will sign Clayton Kershaw. They got to resign him. I mean, they may use whatever free agent money they have this year. They may use that to maybe Trey Turner gets an extension. Might have to lock him. I think Cody Bellinger, I think, is also, I think it might be his last year of arbitration or something like that. So he's looking for a payday. And I think he, he's, I think he might have a pretty huge season. And, you know, they're going to have to figure out what they want to do with Trevor Bauer. And I guess that's going to, they're going to have to wait until Major League Baseball decides what they're going to do with Trevor Bauer. So I, I Dodgers could use a little pitching depth. Even with Clayton Kershaw. Yeah, I'm thinking, yeah. I'm sure they'll give him like a couple years, I want to say. As a, you know, maybe hopefully have him, or maybe make a deal that's, that'll have him re retire a Dodger, you know, basically. That is Stuart Fairchild, rookie autograph on that 1987 design. That's for Danny and the Diamondbacks. Nice. There's a Willie Mays die cut. Corbin Burns means Wander Franco most of the time. Matt Jen racking up the Wanders. Now that we're getting close to the end of the break, I kind of want to see something special, right? A special Wander Franco? And nice, Shane McClanahan, 60 out of 99. You can see that there's, the back is uh, is more, is paper basically, or like a vintage back as I think someone mentioned that the other day. But Shane McClanahan, Future Stars. That's for Matt Jen, 60 out of 99. There's a Wander Franco generation now.
right, another box down. A couple more to go. Ryan Mount Castle box topper for David and the O's. More free agents. Uh, yeah, Chris Bryant still out there. Who else? I guess Matt Carpenter still out there. Nick Castellanos is free agent out there. Good depth guy. Um, Steve Shizik for some bullpen help is out. There. I think he had a decent season last year. Tyler Clipper still out there. Alex Colome still out. Carlos Correa is the other big name that's out there. You know what, with the universal uh, DH pretty much locked in, you know, now instead of 15 teams looking for a DH, 30 teams now, Nelson Cruz still out there. Johnny Cueto is a free agent. Right. Zach Davies a free agent. Corey Dickerson still out there. Sean Doolittle. There's a lot of names out there. Danny Duffy, Matt Duffy, Adam Eaton still out there. Uris Familia, Mike Fultonevich, Freddie Freeman. That's another big name. Freddie Freeman still I forgot about that. I think Freddie Freeman, kind of like a, kind of similar to Clayton Kershaw. I, I can't see. I can't imagine that the Braves won't get a deal done with Freddie Freeman. I think before the before the MLB lockout, I remember Freddie Freeman kind of being connected to the Dodgers. He, he is from Southern California, but... But I don't know if that's maybe... There's Walker Buehler, nice. 67 out of 99. I don't know if that's like his agent or the Freddie Freeman camp kind of drumming that up to, to, to kind of force the Braves into getting the deal done quickly. So, but let's see what happens. I don't know if the Dodgers really, I guess anyone could use a Freddie Freeman, right? I think the DH, you know, I, I guess I, you know, I don't want the DH to happen, but over the years, I've just kind of accepted that it's going to happen, so I just kind of stopped being angry about it. Um, you know, but I think it's going to be a good thing because as some of your favorite players start to get older, there's Greg Holland to 499, especially in the National League. You know, there may be more of those teams willing to re-sign those guys, like, like Freddie Freeman, right? As he gets a little bit older, there's a Greg Holland. No worries, Rick. Thank you for getting in. Uh, Greg Holland for the Royals, Mark. So now guys like Freddie Freeman could uh, could maybe stay with the Brave. Maybe maybe teams are more willing to give these guys longer deals because they're like, well, maybe, maybe we'll put Freddie Freeman as a DH for a little while towards the end of his career. You know, because he'll still be an effective pitcher. Get him off the field the, from the from the strain of being on the field a lot. That does affect players. We've got a Ronald Cunha Jr. Speaking of the Braves, World Champs. That's for Michael Gellis and the uh, ATL. 
Yeah, J Dog, I agree. Some pitching depth, I think the Dodgers could use some of that. But I, I don't know. The Dodgers have so many young prospects. And I feel like it would be cool if they're just like. Maybe you add like a, a free agent or two just for the middle of the rotation. Because what? It'll be Walker Bueller. I mean, I think they still have this guy, David Price. Walker Bueller, Julio Urias, Clayton Kershaw, maybe David Price. And then the 4 or 5 spot. I would love to see the, the news of the 4 or 5 spot for some of the youngsters. Like Andre, Andre Jackson's a rookie in this Series 1 set for the Dodgers. You know, maybe maybe he could be a guy that could be deployed in the back of the rotation. I think Tony Gonsolin is still around. Maybe some of those young guys can figure it out. But you get the bullpen kind of strengthened too. MLB has told MLB that the deal is made by February 28th to preserve opening day on March 31st. Exact, that's exactly what I said, Rex. Old news. That's what I've been saying. They got to they got to make that they got to make a deal in the next by the end of the month or else we're going to see some delays. I've, I've said it when you've been in the chat. I've been saying this the last, like, this whole week, when we, whenever we've been talking about it. With you, Rex. Just don't pay attention to me, I guess. We got Martin Perez, 240 out of 2022 for the Red Sox. Kevin with the Red Sox. Right, yeah, Trevor Bauer, j Dog is also a big question mark. Let's see. I mean, he's going to get disciplined by, by Major League Baseball. I don't think, I think that's definitely what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, Rex, you don't pay, come on. You don't pay attention to me. Oh, autograph. Caught it. Griffin Jax. Justin with the Twins. And we'll do a recap at the end of this break, too. It's a short print. Nice. Cabrian Hayes short print. That's pretty awesome. Almost is the key word, Rex. Almost. Um, Matt Jen with the Pirates. Nice short print. Almost is the operative word. I wasn't insulting you, Rex. I was just I was just spitting facts. That's not an insult. You just don't listen to poor old Joe. You're insulting me. <laughs> You're insulting me. Jeremy Shack, what's up? What are my thoughts on the talk of taking away a minor league level? I did hear about that. What level are they taking away, like a low level rookie ball?
did hear something about it. I don't know the details. They really have to figure out that minor league system. Maybe fewer players in the minor league system maybe means that they can be, you know, just better compensated. But like, if you're drafted outside of the first few rounds or something like that, you're really not getting too much bonus money and kind of a lot of minor leaguers trying to be professionals are living in squalor and then, and I think they're not just, it's hard for them to, it's hard for them to kind of, you know, live as, as baseball players, as crazy as it sounds. You know, um, so what's the reasoning for taking away? What, what's the reasoning for taking away rookie ball? And what are the pros and cons of that? I'm sure, I guess I'm just trying to work that out in my head. Oh, Rex, I want, I, start, I want to tell you something. Um, Nick Jaspi uh, and his dad went to the Topps Rip Party sort of event, quote unquote. I think it was mostly just industry people. It wasn't really it. But uh, the special guest there was Ryan Sandberg. I, I, I don't know, Sam Banks. I've, I've asked people if any, anybody have seen box hopper autographs. No one has mentioned anything, but and I haven't seen any. We've ripped open a decent amount of boxes. I'm sure if we look at a checklist, I'm sure it'll say, but I personally have not seen any. Mike Piazza. Car Prim says Carbon can list them as numbered to 10 or less. So we could, we could find an out of 10 numbered box hopper, but no auto. Oh, there are some. Saw a Franco Redemption box topper autograph? Wow. Yeah, I heard that he's, uh, yeah, I, th I think he's, I don't know if Nick actually got to like chat with him or anything like that, but we've seen, we've seen him at another event before that maybe Topps or Panini had a number of years ago. But yeah, apparently he's really nice. Good dude. Yeah, he should get a managing job at some point someday. Box top, so the box top autographs are out there. Yeah, Jeremy. Yeah, minor league. There's a. I just. I just recently, and I'm. This has been well documented too over the years. But I just saw recently another article about just the plight of minor league ball players, especially if you're not like a bonus baby. If you're not in like the first few rounds, there are a lot of rounds of the baseball draft. I mean, you're not getting a huge amount of bonus money, and you know. You're expected, and you're only paid a few months out of the year because you're only paid during the season. They don't stretch out those salaries over the entire year, which they should. So a lot of the guys getting part-time jobs, you know, but they're they're also like required to stay fit by spring training. Otherwise, you're cut, you know. But you're, they're not getting paid to stay in shape in the off season. They got to work regular jobs. They got to be Amazon drivers or work an Amazon warehouse and blah 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 blah. So if they uh, if they get hurt on their Amazon warehouse job, then their baseball career is over. If they're not staying in shape, you know, can they gotta use the uh, you know they gotta use their own money to go go to a nice gym, you know, 
Wander Franco. So it's it's a it's a real struggle, and they, they kind of bounce around a lot. Sam Remy, yeah, exactly, Rexy. He did manage the Phillies years ago, but didn't work out very well. But I feel like second chance has got to got to happen. Usually the second time around for head coaches, for managers, definitely a little more successful. So I'm not sure why he's never in. Maybe he doesn't want to manage anymore. That's the only thing. I, fig I, felt like, I felt like he would get some opportunities or some interviews or something like that, but maybe it's just a, a matter of him not wanting to manage anymore. And, uh, oh, I was going to finish my thought earlier. The minor leagues also, they bounce around a lot, so it's hard to get, like, housing. Housing's a major issue. You know, when, when you tell your 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 landlord, oh, I, I, you need got to find month-to-month -month places, which I feel like in most spots, you know, in a lot of places can't be that easy. So it gets, it gets kind of crazy, especially if you're... If you're bouncing around or you're only going to be working in that minor league city for a few months at a time. I don't know. It gets tricky. Nice. Sam's downloaded MLB The Show. And it looks great, he's saying. Yachty's wearing his Jordan 10s and has the jump man on his batting gloves, too. That is great detail. Got a Joey Gallo, 14-15 out of 2022. For Kevin and the Yankees. Cardinals Green, that's going to be for Matt Jen. 450 out of 4 at 99. I like that, I like that pattern. here to close this out. Any short print, numbered card perhaps. Oh, there's the auto. Paul DeYoung for St. Louis. That's going to be for Matt Jen. Oh, the nightmare! This is a this is a series one is a dream. I hope we do more series one tonight. In fact, there will be another case coming up. Love it. Um, yeah, we got we got a few fillers to do for that, but yeah, if those fillers sell out. We'll do it. Why wouldn't I? I think we got time for it. Ooh, an autograph in the silver pack behind Cody Bellinger. It's. Josiah Gray, Danny with the Nationals. Former Dodgers pitching prospect. Nice. No. Danny, I don't I don't think there was a home field advantage card in this one. I don't think I don't think they are one per case. Not guaranteed one per case. I think just based on odds they generally fall one per case, but I've seen cases where there are no home field advantage cards. Alright, gang. That is that. Let's do a quick little recap. Really solid break. Thanks everybody for making this happen, for getting into it. I appreciate you.
I appreciate everybody for filling up all of these breaks. That was a very a short print. Nice medallion. That pink was to 50. That's cool. And there you go. <coughs> Excuse me. Dang, I'm losing my voice. Thanks for watching. I'm Joe. I'll see you next time for the next Series 1 break. Bye-bye.